Hey guys, welcome to Better Body Radio episode number 14 and today is actually, believe it or not, 14 episodes in, our first Better Body show, which is our kind of weekly show that we do in multiple different segments. Now this actually isn't going to be typical of our mini shows that we do, which are 20 to 30 minutes, it will be similar to that length, but um, rather than covering like a nutrition topic or a training topic or a healthy lifestyle topic, we thought we'd actually start off the Better Body show with just a little bit of an idea of looking longer term when it comes to your body transformation and so we thought a great way to demonstrate that would actually be to run you through how we go about approaching a client's journey. Uh, I've also got Mrs. Better Body right beside me as well, Mal, uh, joining us today so she will pitch in on all of the things that I will tend to miss out when it comes to going through the journey. Um, exactly, so let's just dive in. So I think what we'll do is we'll pull up the We've got a couple of slides for you guys. Uh, for those that are watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see us now. Hopefully for those that are listening on your preferred podcast platform, we'll do a decent job of being able to describe uh, the visuals and try and get you to almost like see a bit of a movie or a picture in your head of what that journey could look like. Because we know now that the biggest struggle that a lot of people have when they set out on a fat loss journey, a body transformation journey, or any form of training and nutrition journey is that they tend to have a lack of clarity of vision. And so by the end of this podcast, we're hoping that We'll have a little bit more clarity as to what a, a kind of longer term approach looks like to achieve physique transformations. So let's just pull this screen up. All right, we are good to go. So for those of you watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see something on your screen right now. For those that are not, time to listen in. So what is the coaching journey? The coaching journey starts off with getting faster results by training smarter not harder now this is probably something that we spend a lot of time in initial consultations having discussions with clients over because listen most clients know that maybe their nutrition approach hasn't been quite right or they wouldn't be where they are or they've maybe been overly restricted but one thing that tends to get hugely overlooked is the training side of things people tend to think well oh yeah you know i, I kind of lift weights oh you know i kind of train i work hard but they really don't necessarily fully comprehend that yet exactly how effective your training can be for achieving incredible body composition changes um i think mal you put it really well you always talk about the idea of you know it's all about using training as a way to create the adaptations that you want to get and to essentially create the shape that you want especially when you're talking to your ladies maybe you want to touch on that a little bit when you talk to your female clients how you explain this yeah i mean i think a lot of females um, they think of training as a way of burning calories yep. and sweating as much as possible and suffering as much as possible. But they don't think so much about progressive overload. Uh, they don't think so much about actually getting stronger and how important getting stronger is as a, I guess, a way of measuring um, your the effectiveness of your program, which would then reflect the changes in your body. Mm -hmm. Because you're not going to change your physique or body like even if you focus on just getting lean, that's not going to have a major effect on how you look or how the clothes fit unless you also have muscle mass. So what we do at Better Body Collective is that we really place a big emphasis on um, the training program, uh, ensuring that the training uh, is creating the adaptations that we want in terms of building muscle. And part of that is executing movements properly. Uh, most people do not, in our experience, train uh, they don't move effectively in the gym yeah. you know that as well and one of the things that we hear like pretty much every single person that we get in front of them that we work with they say i wish i would have known this 10 years ago i've been training mm -hmm. wrong all my life so it's it's not to be big-headed or say that you know we're no no it's, it's not to be convoluted in any way it's just I mean, here's how, the how would you know so yeah so how would you know that you're yeah. not training you've never been shown so that's where we come in. Like we would teach you, we would show you how to execute properly. You wouldn't know unless someone, unless you've studied biomechanics, unless you've worked with a coach who has studied biomechanics and to know how to uh, execute movement properly. You wouldn't know because you've never been shown that. So that's all that we do. It's not complicated. 100%. It's like always the same goes. You don't know what you don't know, right? And yeah. it's, um, it's funny, like awareness is the first part of any change, right? You have to be aware that there's actually a possibility to do better, be better, to change. Uh, for the guys, maybe a bit of a tangent versus, so a lot of the ladies that's turning up to group classes or turning up to the gym, it's all about sweat fish, right? It's about burning calories. For guys, it can sometimes be like that as well. But I think for a lot of guys, it's this idea of going into the gym, lifting as heavy as possible, which, you know, in theory, good to lift heavy, but they almost, there's a lot of ego lifting. It's a lot of high volume, tons of momentum, tons of crazy reps, all about just doing tons and tons of volume and work. 
working through pain, like yeah, shoulder. working through niggles and and just and all avoiding leg day and things like that. And the reality is, is we we want to show people, you know, I certainly with guys and gals that, that I work with, that we work with, is that there you can, we want to encourage people to be able to learn how to get the most from the least. So mm. often people feel like they have to do tons of volume, i.e., like four or five sets of exercises. And they're doing that because they're not able to get an effective enough response from one, two, maybe three sets. And this is where this whole people follow these IFBB pros and these bodybuilders on you know social media who are taking a ton of, of gear, a ton of exogenous uh, compounds, and they can get away with shitty technique because they've got a very, very rich hormonal environment. And as long as they create enough stimulus, they're going to get some changes. That doesn't mean to say that the training couldn't be more effective and that they couldn't avoid injury better and that as you as a general pop, you know, someone who hasn't got that assistance and who has got an eight to five job, you're super stressed out, you're, you're potentially working late hours on your computer at home, you maybe have kids, you've got all these other things going on where the gym isn't your life and soul. We need to make sure that we're training smarter, not necessarily harder, but training smart with the right marriage of kind of accurate execution, but the right intensity for you and your current ability level. And the idea, of course, is to shift that, that needle as we move over time. So that's part one. Then part two would just be nutrition based around fats, not fads, designed around your lifestyle and goals. So I'll start out and then Mal, you can add to it. Um, there's a lot of misconception around nutrition, to put it bluntly. There's a lot of omission of foods. There's a lot of guilt and, and misconceptions around how to approach dieting to lose body fat. And for anyone who's studied any form of evidence-based nutrition, you know, we both studied my nutrition, um, we know what the evidence says. Now, there, there are some gaps in the literature and we know that. However, as far as body composition changes are concerned, we know it's not a lot. And so the way we tend to approach our, our clients' nutrition, and I actually got asked this in a consult yesterday was, mm -hmm. so what's your guys' philosophy? Like, how is it maybe different from, from other coaches? And listen, a lot of other coaches, you know, maybe they're not qualified nutritionists, but they've, they've just had a bit of skin in the game. And they've kind of said, right, well, this worked for me in the past, you know, eating five, six meals a day, little and often, smoking the metal like fire and all that stuff. Uh, so I'm just going to give that to you, but kind of some slight tweaks to you as an individual. And... Then that person's forcing them six meals a day, and because it's so rigid, there's no flexibility within a set of principles that can then cause issues and maybe not get the most the, the most effective results you can get, not only from the fat loss phase, but then what about the exit strategy? Say you come out the other side, and all of a sudden you're like, Well, I only know how to eat one way. So now I'm back in a completely different scenario with different circumstances. So, yeah, can I add to 100%. That? Yeah, yeah. So I think as well in the concept or in the context of females particularly. You know, they've maybe, I don't know, signed up for coaching or a nutrition plan or something like that. And it's been very restrictive in nature because it's focused a lot more on, a, on like, a, like Ross said, being very uh, rigid rather than being flexible. And what often happens is that obviously they fail, they can't stick to it. And, you know, they might feel that, oh, you know, why am I always, I always self-sabotage, I can't stick to my diet and all of these sort of things where they put a lot of, a lot of guilt on themselves in failing, but really it's not really that they yeah like they will feel like they've failed because they can't stick to the diet but the issue isn't that it's because the diet hasn't been designed for them around around their lifestyle and their goals keeping still the principles of fat loss that we know are relatively simple um in mind so for what i find with a lot of my females client female clients is that when they do when we work on building a nutrition plan that works for them that what they like how many times they want to eat and they're not going to fail because it's sort of tailored around them and that's i guess where you know being flexible with your method while adhering to the principle um is important yeah and i think to add to that as well like um, a lot of people or a lot of coaches when they design nutrition plans for clients it's almost it's exclusion based rather than what can we add or include to your diet and the way i looked at it is this is that you should ideally be starting at a place where you have all of the options available so the starting point of a diet ideally should be very inclusive and then over time, ideally, then it may be as we have a lower budget to work with as far as our calories and energy balance, it may be that, yes, we have educated, okay, when is it appropriate to potentially omit certain foods that might not be resourceful at that given point in time? And then also, when is it appropriate to bring those foods back in? And so that's part of the education process. But if we just simply label, we see this a lot, oh, I ate sugar, that's me failing my diet. It's like, but hold on a minute, if you actually calculated your calories, you're still in a calorie deficit. You just mm -hmm. had a bit of chocolate. That doesn't mean that your diet's done, but this is the way people often think. They think, well, if I have this bad food, oh, that's me ruining the diet. Now, mm -hmm. actually, if they just factored that particular food that they wanted into their diet within their energy needs, 
live in a much better place. So I guess that to, 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 to Mal's point as well with our female clients, we say it with male clients as well, they're not without of their you know, mm. relationship and issues no. with food, is once you have a set of principles, you work within that framework. And then the, the how we're going to potentially add or take things in or out is going to be purely based on context. And that context is dependent on where you're at in your current journey and you as an individual. And uh, may I add, as a final point, also the importance of this process to be a journey of self-discovery. Mm. So, uh, for example, one of my clients, you know, she I helped her set up some breakfast options based on the things that she liked. And one day she's like, okay, Malva, I'm going to have oats and a protein shake. And this is one of her breakfast options as well that, we, that, that I gave her. And she had that. And then, you know, she discovered that after not that long she felt really hungry and she was less full from that breakfast compared to a couple of her other breakfast options that we had put together so you know if she had done this by herself and she'd had a certain breakfast then you know the, the main point is that i was then there to sort of have this discussion and this communication with her and help her see that okay do you see when you have this breakfast you know you're actually more hungry which would then make it more likely for you to overeat potentially at the rest of the day if you're not aware because yeah. that breakfast wasn't satisfying but I let her discover that by testing it. And for another client, she actually had the same breakfast and she was fine. So everyone is different. That's the individual That's part. the individual part. So it's just what we do is, and what we're really good at is working as long as that individual communicate with us, which is the core of coaching is that communication. Uh, we work with the individual to build a plan that works for them. But it doesn't happen. It's not like you start coaching from day one. That's your plan. No, it's a process that we work through yeah, it over weeks evolves, constantly it evolves, evolves over weeks which brings which bridges uh nicely to the uh, third part of the coaching um what, what's involved in the coaching is i guess accountability reinsurance and support which is so yeah so um as mal just mentioned um that we segued onto accountability and support and how we go about that there's quite a few ways that we achieve really honing in and kind of Supporting our clients in many different ways. And so the one-to-one -one aspect we'll start with. So we use a communications app called Slack, which essentially a lot of businesses use as a project management tool to communicate between teams and all that stuff. We just found it a super nice way of being able to kind of house our coaching clients and be able to communicate with them directly without being bombarded by the usual distractions of like WhatsApp and some of the other messaging apps that are maybe on already. Mm -hmm. Slack just allows them to think, right, when I use Slack, that's for my coaching, that's for reaching out to Coach Mal, Coach Ross, who I'm working with. I can communicate with them directly with no distractions. Um, it also allows us to kind of house things like their sheets, part of, that part of their coaching process, like some of their handbooks. So we use a couple of different pieces of technology and apps to be able to communicate with people. Um, I think the other, the next thing probably to mention about the accountability and support is we have a weekly check-in tracker that we set up that we're pretty proud of and maybe one day we'll put it into an app. But it's, it's a, something that we are able to collect what, both what's called qualitative so I think of this as like your data, like your weight and your food and everything else, and uh, quantitative data as well. Also, that's quantitative. Qualitative being things like the subjective stuff, like your biofeedback, how you feel, um, what's happening in the real world, to tell us what your challenges, what your win. And so we have a, a weekly check-in form, which is fairly comprehensive, but isn't hopefully too daunting for most people. Uh, and that allows us as coaches to collect all the necessary data, all the necessary context, and then we'll be able to touch base with a client in detail on a week-to-week -week basis. Not that yeah, right just, I mean, obviously the benefits, this is, this is the, you know, this is the accountability part is one of the most important part of coaching. So that throughout the, you know, using all these sheets and the communication, it doesn't really matter what the software is, but it's just a way of us to uh, keep you accountable and to, you know, when you're having a bad day or a bad week or the weight might not be changing as much as you, as you would have hoped or like we can just troubleshoot and we can reassure you and we can look at the data because if you don't have the data then you don't know what's happening exactly. so i think you know having a data-driven process but still obviously focusing on the person that's at center and how you feel and uh, that's really the you know the core component of our mind body mastery program and what we do 100 and just to touch on that word reassurance because it, i think it tends to get overlooked as far as how valuable that is in the coaching process because why do, for example, why do Mal and I have a coach and Mark? In fact, for example, coaches, myself, Mal and Mark actually all have the same coach. We work with a guy called Calvin Maestro. But people often, I've had this question so many times actually recently as well. Mm -hmm. Well, how long, are you still working with your coach? Like, I was like, yeah, it's been a year and a half. Well, why do you need a coach? And people are still surprised that coaches work with coaches. Well, it's very simple. Even though we have the knowledge, 
especially when you're going through times of your coaching journey where it's hard to be impartial to your own progress. Mm -hmm. You need that, you know, kind of very unbiased, educated eye to have a look, just like anyone else, just like anyone hiring us. We, we need that just as much as you do. So being able to be reassured that actually things move in the right direction, even when this happens, even if you're not able to look at things in a very, you're not able to take your emotions out of the equation, your coach is going to be able to do that super, super well. It's just about outsourcing the thinking for me as well. Mm. Like, you know, for me, I don't want to think about what my training program is going to be or because I tend to do program things that I like doing then rather than things that I maybe need to do. That sounds like most or, people as well, right? you know, I, under, I don't think about, oh, you know, I do these sessions. Like, I don't think the same way when it comes to myself as I do with clients. So by just outsourcing that side of things, it means I can just go on auto mode and just execute well, and that doesn't mean though that you mindlessly train you still have a structure yeah, yeah. A plan, yeah. it's just that it allows you to go and focus on executing and not being too brain intensive about the setup and everything else. which would be the same for uh for anyone you know because you know otherwise you'd have to plan your own program or you know maybe find a random program online or find the diet plan or try a set method and but it doesn't mean to say that that's going to work for you so this is just a way of putting that responsibility onto someone else who will also keep you accountable through the journey um yeah and then so, the last point before we move on to the yeah. education component is support and uh, not only do we support you as well, i think we're still oh what happened there we're still recording it's still recording you just stopped sharing okay you just need to reshare and then continue you when you're not close then. Mm. Right, I'll edit this out. Okay. Is it better to have it on a not online when you do not talk to me? Right, so before we move on to the education component, uh, probably worth touching on just the last bit about the support. So as much as we support our clients on a one-to-one -one basis, one thing that's really cool about our community is we have essentially what's called the Mind Body Mastery Inner Circle, which is our, where we kind of have a collective community Facebook group where people can come in, they can share their wins, they can share their, their challenges, ask questions. And I think having that kind of supportive group environment can be super, super useful as well. You want to add to that as well, Matt? No. No? Cool. Um, so we'll move on to the ongoing education. So we want people to not be dependent on us. We want people to become independent. Uh, and unfortunately, when it comes to the fitness industry and the personal training model, you're taught this right back early. I'm sure you remember this as well now. You know, make sure that you make your clients as dependent on you as physically possible so that you retain them and you keep attention. And I look back on that now and I think that is so crooked and that's such against the way we work and our ethics. Now, don't get me wrong. We are not a coaching option where you work with us for three, four months and then see you later and the job done because of how we work and because of the level of detail and the, the whole 360 approach to the entirety of your journey, our coaching journey is going to be longer than you are going to experience with most say personal trainers most coaches cases. in most cases. Yeah. Uh, you listen, you might come to us and you have a set time frame of like having a 12 week deep fresh at point X event. And if we feel that we can realistically achieve that, then that's a whole different thing. But the majority of clients are doing this a bit more that right? I want the longer term. Mm. Uh, that six to 12 month period. Um, and so I guess with the ongoing education and, and kind of how we try to work is we want to make sure our clients are intellectually involved throughout the entirety of the process so that they understand nutrition for them as an individual. They understand training for them as an individual. They understand all of the principles and the things they need to be aware of so that when we reach the end of our, the natural end of our coaching journey with them, they're able to go on and thrive in that kind of maintenance mode. So that's kind of really the end game as far as the ongoing education and power them with all of the, the knowledge and the tools they need to fly in their lifestyle. Yeah, and then, you know, it's going to be more a situation where if someone has been with us for, you know, maybe nine months, a year or longer, that, you know, if they wanted to, they could, you know, go on and, and continue to maintain their results or continue working towards the goal by, by themselves, but they might choose to stay because, you know, they, they enjoy 
having a coach and they value that relationship and to continue to outsource certain elements of their fitness and health journey to someone else but that's because they then see us and the coaching process as an essential part of their life like something that they value yeah. but they don't need to it's not like if they stop coaching they will regain weight and then it's game over that's not it it's more like a i stay because i want to and because i see the value so yeah it's like that old uh, i can't remember if it was steve jobs that said this but it was um one of the top companies they used to say that treat people or have people in such a way where they can leave you anytime that they stay because they enjoy being part of that environment and that team and that's mm-hmm. kind of how we want our clients to feel as well and then i guess the other component as well is listen as a team we constantly educate ourselves we're constantly upskilling we're leveling up all the time and so sometimes even when clients just think they've maybe learned all that there is to learn we level up we pass that knowledge on and they're like oh actually i feel like there's still more and more and more to yeah. learn so that process never stops and as long as someone maybe wants to be around and wants to be continually leveling up themselves then but like mal said that's just because that's a choice it's not because they need to mm-hmm. i think that's super key to our our whole philosophy right creating that independence cool so let's uh, move on from there yeah, let's the dive in core elements of the coaching i guess mind body mastery exactly Core sort of components now let's talk about our five stage coaching journey um i'll start out with this one and then you can tag on top now yes i think what this is is basically how we ensure that you're getting results not just in the short term but also in the long run this is how we build your uh, journey to success 100 so before we get into talking about cycles for example we'll, we'll talk about each of the building blocks so if we look at cycles when we talk about a coaching cycle this just refers to a particular um, length of time within your coaching roadmap or journey that you're trying to achieve a particular goal and each cycle is generally made up of these constituent blocks within here, these building blocks, so to speak. Five stages or five yeah, building blocks. Five building blocks. I mean, we used to refer to them as stages, but actually, you know, mm-hmm. as long as you're with us throughout this journey, you can actually move up and down the continuum, so to speak, or up and down through multiple stages. And you may revisit stages at other cycles later mm-hmm. in your journey as well, uh, depending on how Yeah, it's not like you, this kind of looks like you're only going through, if you're watching this on YouTube, that you go through the journey in a certain, certain order. Uh, but if you're with us longer, that's not necessarily the case. So, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll probably yeah. design this graphic at some stage to uh, represent that. Those who don't have, who don't see this, let's maybe mention each stage, and then we can talk about how they fit. Exactly. So let's start right at the bottom. All right. Let's mention all of them first. So, so. Let's, okay. Well, let's go through all five. So you've got prepare, you've got transform, you've got solidify, optimize, and reward. So these five are, stages. These are the name of our five stages. So we're going to start right down to prepare, and as the name alludes to. It's about preparation. It's about getting you into a physiologically and psychologically suitable place to be able to handle the rigors of a focus coaching phase. Do you want to expand on that a bit now? Because uh, you've had some clients recently yeah. where this was almost a bit of a light bulb for you. Because you mentioned initially, like, yeah, well, I mean, I understand the value of the prepare phase, but never really get it. So you maybe want to share why that's. No, I mean, I always understood the value of it for sure. So the way I explain it to clients is that there, for some clients, like the preparation phase is also like the initial stage in a dating phase if you've just met someone uh, because if because we've said this before already like the coaching is about the coaching relationship and when you take on a client for the first time like you don't necessarily have all that knowledge and and uh, and trust and rapport already there that's something that you build over time so the preparation phase is time for you to sort of kind of date and get to know each other for me to get an idea of what are you currently doing because I can't effectively coach you until I know what are you already doing what are your challenges already and yes I already have an idea of this because we've already had a conversation about this but the preparation phase is more about just getting deeper into that yep and you know so we have something called a preparation week which is more about you know sharing you know how are you currently managing your day your meals your food like that sort of preparation time to get to know each other and the actual phase could last just a week in some cases in some yeah. cases it might last i have a, a lady now who's still in prepare and she's been working with me for six weeks now um you know sh- um, it's a little bit it's more on a lower level in terms of um how we manage the food for example so maybe we can talk about that in yeah, so just to follow on from that, like, let's kind of just look, I guess, at the mechanical aspects of the kind of practical application of this. So generally speaking, prepare will last anywhere from one to two weeks till potentially even as far as 12 weeks or beyond, right? And so if I look at people who are going to have a shorter prepare phase, these are usually people who are kind of ready to go or maybe they've had a bit of experience with 
doing this type of thing in the past already. They're just in a place where they're ready to get going. They have right? a lot of the habits that are needed to get, a, you know, physique transformation in place already, like sleep and stress management, and they're already, like, physically, mentally, emotionally ready to to embark on that journey. Yeah, health conscious individuals. They've got, like you say, that baseline of habits. Maybe not yeah. perfect, no. but certainly enough but to get. They work on that over exactly a enough to get going. Yeah. Uh, and listen, uh, just to touch on that as well, like there's a lot of bloody coaches, trainers, even advanced trainees who haven't got all of that stuff down, but yeah. they still make progress. So don't think that you know that if you've not got all this in place already, that that's it. You're never going to get results. It's all everyone's a constant work in progress, right? You also get results in prepare. Like the client that I mentioned, you know, she's six weeks in, already in prepare, she's down, you know, almost a kilo a week. So she's still getting results. It's just that the way we approach the transformation is a little bit different from someone who's in transform. Yeah, that's it. I was going to touch on that point literally at the end of prepare, but that's such a key point. A lot of people often think, oh, am I just wasting my time doing prepare? Absolutely not. You still see results. It's just that the focus isn't inherently about let's try to really just weight loss. Drop the hammer and really yeah. get that eight to twelve percent of body weight off at that point depending on individuals so yeah. so 100 percent. and then for those that maybe have a longer prepare phase it's maybe individuals who like you say haven't got those baseline habits there psychologically they're just not maybe quite ready yet they're almost there but they're not quite ready yet uh, it could also be someone who actually is a bit more experienced or is just an individual who's had long periods of chronic dieting lots of low energy availability and actually they're in a position where they need to potentially do a reverse diet or kind of build their way back up to a bit of a healthier maintenance restore you know, kind of health physiology back to a better baseline. Those individuals may need a longer prepare phase before they maybe even look at transform. Mm -hmm. So moving on to part two, unless there's anything you want to add. No. No. So part two would be transform. So transform is what gets put on a pedestal by the fitness industry. It's the whole before and after. It's the just the fat loss phase. Uh, the way we look at the fat loss phase is the fat loss phase is merely a component or a checkpoint along the entirety of the journey. And it might be that you require more than one phase of fat loss throughout your different cycles and different journeys. But for most people that come to us, they'll have some form of prepare and then they'll move into transform. The goal of that transform phase is to take anywhere between 12, 16, maybe even as much as 20, 24 weeks in some people's mm -hmm. cases to get that initial real chunk of compositional change from a fat loss perspective off. The goal during that phase is also to keep those habits nailed down, to even refine them even that little bit further, things like sleep quality, things like digestion, all that sort of stuff whilst being able to train hard to either retain muscle tissue is the ideal goal because listen like Mal said before you could just get smaller and still be small and soft or you can get smaller but have the shape you want uh, or lose body fat and have the shape you want so we need to make sure that at the very least we're maintaining muscle tissue as we go through that fat loss phase and we do that with effective resistance training and a well set up nutrition plan um you want to want to add anything to that um no i think that's uh... That's good. I mean, I think it's just, yeah, as Ross said, it's um, it's a dieting phase. It's a fat loss phase. If you are fairly new to this, you don't have a lot of muscle, then we'd look to actually gain lean tissue while you go through transform. Yeah, it's definitely if possible you, as well. If you've got already lean tissue, if you're a little bit more experienced, then potentially this is just uh, let's focus on getting your diet on point and you know lose body fat while retaining tissue and maybe working on improving training mechanics and all the things that we talked about before yeah so it's just uh, it's just a phase of that but i think the main the most important thing here is that you shouldn't be dieting forever exactly. it's you know we have a target so usually we set eight to ten percent off your current weight and um, that's a realistic loss to reach within a, a single fat loss phase yeah. but then after that we'd have a break now the next question might be well if i've got more to go why do I take a break? Why don't I just keep dieting? And like Mal said, fat loss isn't forever. And actually fat loss is a very stressful event for the body. Something that can be managed well with an appropriate and very intelligently designed plan. However, um, there's a couple of things that are going to happen here. At some stage, your body has a very clever way of almost like what we call a defense mode of defending itself. So it will do a, a couple of different physiological adaptations to ensure that you survive. Because that's ultimately what your brain is programmed to do. Your brain is programmed to keep you alive and to survive. Now, being very lean is not inherently natural to our survival. We actually were programmed to have a certain amount of body fat and to, to have that for when you know times of famine and you didn't have access to lots of food, so you'd be able to tap into your food stores. However, our body is very good also then, okay, say we are going to start bringing those fat stores down. It does, you have what's called adaptive thermogenesis, which is in very simple terms is, imagine you've got a basal metabolic rate, essentially the base amount of energy you need just for your general physiological function, not including exercise and not including non-exercise activity, right? 
that will essentially start to adjust down for two reasons. One, because you're a lighter individual. So your body weight, if you lose 10 kilos, you're now carrying around 10 less kilos. You don't need as much energy to move your body weight around. And then two, you've got this adaptive component as well. So what we usually do at the end of a transform phase is we then go into what's called solidify. Now solidify is our name that we give to reverse dieting. Because we want to offset one, that adaptive thermogenesis that was experienced during the dieting phase, and two, we want to bring you back to a baseline with plenty of energy availability because that's where you're going to exist, that's where you're going to thrive, and that's also where you're going to have the opportunity to, con to continue to progress in your training if you so choose to. So this is often the missing part. Anyone who's ever done a diet before, they do a diet that's often not uh, tailored to the goals yep. or their level, and then they go back to old habits again because it's just been quite a stressful event. So what we do is that we make sure that we give your body a chance to adjust to the new body weight, the new body composition, um, having more energy there without regaining body fat. So at least minimizing. minimizing. Yeah. yeah, during a solidification phase, technically you shouldn't gain body fat. You might gain a bit of weight because of, you know, glycogen you storing glycogen and, and, and things like that. But yeah, your composition should remain fairly, if, unless you're like, unless the transformation phase is like photo shoot, pump prep lean, for a general population client, solidify is more just maintain your composition. Yeah, and maybe give a couple of practical examples of that. So I've had three clients very recently go through a solidify phase, two of them which have done incredibly well. And interesting enough, what we tend to see happen is actually in the first two to four weeks of a solidify phase, mm -hmm. they actually continue losing body fat and losing weight sometimes. Then of course things will kind of peter out, and especially as we're driving calories back up to more of whatever the new maintenance is. Yes, the scale will go up, but like you said, actually composition-wise, they look better. There's more glycogen in the muscle cells. The muscle cells look brown, they're fuller. They actually look more aesthetic. They just look overall if, healthier Particularly as well. if like all your clients are obviously, they, they've been getting lean in that transformation phase. You know, they didn't have that much to lose. But if you're someone who's starting up heavier already, then that might not happen that you, because you don't yeah. have enough, like you're not lean enough or have enough muscle exactly. tissue. It varies but by degree rather than kind of, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's an interesting process. So, you know, if you are starting up heavier or you have maybe more than, you know, five or six kilos to lose, then you're going to need several diet phases to achieve that end goal. Exactly. So, I mean, just to summarize, solidify, um, it's going to be somewhere anywhere from six to 10 weeks, depending on how harshly you responded to the fat loss phase, especially for females often when there's, you know, the menstrual cycle to consider as well. We might bring them back up a little bit quicker to restore normal mm -hmm. physiological function. But if the response to the dieting phase has been fairly good, we can actually taper things up a bit slower. You know, so some of my guys, it's been like actually a 10 week reverse diet phase, which is quite long for a reverse diet, but they were in a really good place at the end of that. So they were able to taper it a bit slowly. However, if someone was getting more like photo shoot lean or stage lean, or they were really feeling the effects of a diet, we might want to do slightly bigger jumps back up towards maintenance quicker. Um, yep. So that's solidified. Uh, and like Mal said, it's the missing piece. And Often when we speak to our clients, actually, they've often been through the transform component multiple times throughout their life, but they've just never been explained to what a reverse diet is and what and the importance of maintenance and how we need to allow our bodies what's called homeostatic mechanisms to kind of allow to and the, settle for a period and of time. And a lot of people as well underestimate, like they have this idea of how they want to look and how they think they will look after losing a few kilos, but it's far away from the reality. So a lot of the time people need to lose a lot more weight than they actually think they need to lose for a specific look. I'm glad you touched on that because I, I wanted to at some stage, but I didn't know how <laughs> it would be. But yeah, like if I ask most of the guys that I speak to, um, I'm sure for the females it's something similar. If you ask most males walking into a gym nowadays, how much weight do you think you need to lose to be, I mean, in good neck, like really lean, like potentially close to photo shoot lean? They would say, ah, if I lose five, six kilos, I'll be brilliant. I would say to any male client I work with, most clients I work with, think about what you think it is, double it, add a little bit on and that's probably more like it right um i had a couple of clients literally lost like 13 kilos and realistically if they want to get lean 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 like the next level lean they probably had another four or five to go now these like mal said are guys that weren't overweight to start with they were just carrying some extra body fat that's 15 kilos for just those individuals so you imagine then if you're quite a bit more overweight or got a long way to go it's mm -hmm. really going to take a lot more than 12 weeks to get so there it's like being really realistic and that's one of the things that we do try and really do from the very beginning before we take someone on that this is where you are if this is where you want to go this is what's going to be expected are you willing yes, to do managing that? expectations managing okay. expectations so that you don't get disappointed after 12 weeks when you know you might have lost six seven kilos but you don't look 
like the fitness model or the shape that you might have thought you could do. So we can't, you know, we can only be honest and yeah. set realistic, set expectations. But one of the things that we do try and do is to not just focus on that end image or that end goal, but to really enjoy the process of getting there, even if that mm -hmm. may take you two years. It might take you two years to get from A to where you really want to go, but try and embrace the journey and the process to see your body change, to learn, to you know, discover things, to manage manage everything better in terms of your life, not just the training and the diet, but everything. You know, it's a very rewarding feeling when you're in more control, when you feel like you're in control of your transformation yeah. rather than just jumping on, I'm going to do this detox. And then, you know, you're not in control. You're never going to be in, in control until you take responsibility for where you want to go and to uh, go about that transformation in a, in a healthy way, which is what we have been. 100%. So should we move on yes, to the, let's move the next on. component? So optimize. Optimize is essentially, well, actually, let's, let's wrap up kind of what a cycle is. So that would be what we call a traditional cycle one. Most people generally have a prepare, they'll go through a fat loss phase, they'll reverse diet, and then they kind of arrive back at this maintenance point. And that would kind of be end of cycle one for most people. When we move on to cycle two, that can look like many different outcomes. It could be simply to move straight to reward, which you can see at the top if you're watching on YouTube. But for the guys who don't know, we've got for our last two blocks near the top here that optimize reward. So many people will finish this first transformation phase and they'll just want to move to reward. And reward is essentially your ability to auto-regulate, it's your ability to maintain, it's your ability to thrive. It's moving away from tracking, exactly. moving away from that and just being able to like maintain your results and live your life. Exactly. And that's the thing that people often forget is that all of the habits that you've built through prepare and through transform, those are ultimately the baseline habits that we keep in in order to be able to maintain the physique that you want. Uh, and maybe a point to touch on that from the, the going through the fat loss phase as well, though, and getting that. This before and after photo tends to get put right up on a pedestal. It tends to be the thing that everyone thrives for. But the reality is you've got to love your maintenance physique as much as your end of fat loss phase physique because your maintenance physique is the one you have to spend the most time living in, yeah. thriving yeah. in, performing in. So that's why if you do the reverse diet right, you're still going to be super happy with how you look and feel. In fact, if anything, you're going to feel better and look better by the end of the reverse diet. So then... Say, for example, you just want to maintain that, and that's fine, you go into reward, and like Mal said, that's removing tracking, that's re relying on those habits and leaning on those habits and allowing that to maintain. That's a process as well. So this is the key that's thing. That's a learning part. It's yeah. not like you, you, you can't necessarily go from tracking things, tracking calories and macros, measuring food, to just completely stop. For a lot of people, they feel really lost in the beginning, and they don't have that trust in themselves that they can actually maintain their physique, often because they've failed at that before yeah so our role as coaches then is to help you transition from from that way from that phase like a dieting or solidified type approach to trusting yourself and the habits that you've built during that time so that's a gradual approach we, we might start by just okay let's only track you know let's only track certain days of the week and let's take some on track days. It's mm -hmm. about helping you get more in tune. Maybe let's just try calories and protein, remove a couple of the variables. Yeah, more intuitive yeah. eating because it's really hard. I find that I've been, I'm, I intuitively eat a lot. I also track at times when I have a specific goal and I find that they're conflicting. I find it really hard to intuitively eat when I'm also tracking and mm -hmm. other way around. So, you know, but I'm comfortable with both. I just can't do both at the same time. So it's about teaching the clients that we work with and helping them develop that trust in themselves and to trust their hunger and energy signals which would be a lot better naturally from going through that initial phase anyway when, yeah. when you start you probably have cravings and uh, you know you, you don't know your body that well but all of that will be taken care of throughout the initial phase but anyway so um cycle two could be moving into reward it could be if you have more weight to lose, we might actually go back and continue continuing with transform. So we go back yeah. to transform again to knock off a few extra, a little bit more body weight, mm -hmm. if that's what the goal is. Yeah, um, and it could also be another thing. It could also be moving into what's called optimize, which is this fourth block, which is something that tends to be, especially with the female population clientele, tends to be very overlooked as they want to spend so much time being lean and dieting all the time that actually spending a time at maintenance calories or on a slight surplus, but really training hard training and progressing hard, your yeah. training, getting stronger and laying down that muscle tissue. Now, a lot of women are really scared because they're thinking, well, I don't want to build, I just want to be slender or lean. Just understand something very clearly that when it comes to lifting weights and getting stronger, it is not going to turn you into the Hulk. It just is not possible unless you're taking a whole bunch of different, um, shall we say, special supplements in order to get there. For females, all getting stronger is going to do is to continually improve your shape. Now, listen, 
you've been training for long enough, consistent enough for years, yes, you will build muscle tissue, you know, and not all women want to have these bulging quads or, you know, the, the kind of traps of the shoulders. But it, again, it's you kind of work yourself up to a point where you've got your physique, how you want it to look, and then it's much easier to maintain once you're there. You've got to uh, put in the groundwork though. Yeah, That's and you can't thing. do that if you're constantly dieting all no. the time. So we need to spend ideally times where we're focusing on building, getting stronger, performing better. That's what Optimize is. And that can last anywhere from 12 weeks, you know, three months, four months. Uh, ideally, I would spend a lot longer. If you look at most physique competitors, for example, and granted they're at the top end of what they're doing, getting those little bit of extra changes mm -hmm. takes a lot more work. Mm -hmm. However, they'll spend literally like nine months, for example, just constantly going after building and maybe doing little small tidy ups along the way but that's at a different end of the spectrum for most of our general population clients it's just spending enough time just allowing your training to progress having more food available and then the reality is even if you do like you put on a good amount of muscle tissue you might gain a little bit of body fat again you just pull out that pull that building block back into the pile and you just pull out the transform block and you just work yourself through that again because a lot of the women that you know i work with or that i have worked with over the years like it's not often you hear someone say or a woman Think, well actually i need to spend a year just building muscle uh, it happened one time it was actually a lady who works with another coach in the gym and i thought that was really cool she uh she said to me that she she's got three kids three young kids and you know she's training hard she's been training many years etc and um, she said that you know for this year this was last year so i spoke to her this was a while ago she said you know i'm going to treat the next year as a pregnancy but rather than being pregnant, I'm going to focus on building muscle. And I thought that was a really cool way of thinking. Like she'd really understood that concept of, I need to put in the time and the effort into getting strong, eating food, eating enough food. So not restricting calories, but actually eating enough to force that adaptation, force that muscle tissue to lay down so that at a later dieting phase, she'd actually have something to show for it. So to, to, to treat that as a pregnancy, I thought that was pretty cool. Like I've never been pregnant, but for maybe... Uh, those of you who listen who have kids and you know the, the, the time that that will take to, to take the time to actually build muscle and how important that is and that's a lot more fun as well than dieting you know it's just everyone wants to diet all the time or get leaner all the time but you know imagine just spending you know nine months to a year just getting strong you know feel like a freaking badass in the gym and yeah it's heavier weights, right so we would normally put that in straight away when we start with a client because often if you're a beginner or if you knew you haven't worked with us before then you don't really have the execution and the, what can I say, the, the skills to make the most out of an optimization exactly, phase. Yeah. We could do that if you work with us in person. We could probably go into an optimization phase earlier. But typically with someone who works with us online or maybe in a hybrid manner, optimize will come later when we know that you can actually execute the movements properly. And then you'd make the most out of a phase like exactly. that. There's no so, point otherwise. Exactly. To, yeah. So with Optimize, like the, just to, while we're, we're on the subject, if you were, so if we did have someone approach us who was really experienced, like they've really been through all these phases multiple times, and actually the last few things I've done or the focused phases I've done previously have been a lot of dieting, that might be someone that we start an Optimize phase. It might be actually, we're starting you right in the opposite end. It, it, it might be even that individual needs to reverse diet, Optimize, and go into it. So hopefully that just gives you a bit of an idea that this can really be individualized to the specific needs of an individual that's the key premise i guess of even going through all of these mm. blocks in the it's just in the first place it's just being aware that we have all we have these five stages for a particular reason and each stage has a specific goal a specific focus and a specific purpose in your transformation journey so it's knowing when each stage or phase is apl applicable yep. and how to build your journey in the most optimal way to over time generate the results that you want so yeah so should we just quickly have a quick summary and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll call it a day but yeah so just to run through five phases we have prepare transform solidify optimize reward all of these have their place and time it just depends on what the goal of that particular cycle is and a cycle would consist of anything between one to three of these stages of these building blocks exactly. these building blocks and uh, this is something that we put together when a client joins man body mastery we put together what we call a roadmap which mm. will map out on a high level your initial cycle so we tend to break the roadmap up in cycles so in cycle one we're going to focus on prepare transform solidify with milestones of what is to be expected and realistic to achieve within that time exactly yes awesome so i think that's a good time to wrap up so listen guys thank you again for tuning in today hopefully that was a bit more insightful into not only looking longer term into physique transformations and getting away from this constant eight to 12 week transformation that you're bombarded with it's online the challenge. All the time. 
your maybe current thinking a little bit and also give you insight to how we work with exactly. you to you know uh how how we work and why we work the way we do and why so we don't yeah sorry <laughs> that's ideal it's ideal so exactly so that's a great way to wrap up so if you guys are interested in finding out more about how we do things how we work with clients you can reach out to us on our at better body collective instagram page everything you need to find in terms of uh, you know what we do um you know our kind of free resources hub where we offer a lot of free resources but more importantly related to the podcast how you can understand a little bit more about the mind body mastery coaching plan you just click the link in our bio and you'll be able to find all of the information you possibly and, need to know. Um, if you know however you're ready to get started right now you can also just click those once you've clicked the link it'll come up with a little summary page there's a button there that you just tap which will say work with us tap that button, fill out the short application form and we'll get the ball rolling. Well, what we do on the call as well, like that's basically to have a call is that now you, yeah. you now you've, we've talked you through like how the coaching process work and why we do what we do. So on that call, it'd be more about, well, okay, tell me about where you are, where you want to go. And we basically give you like a mini version of the roadmap based on the information that we have about you, how your transformation would look like. And then you can make a decision as to whether you want to work with us or not. So the call is just, give it's just basically tailoring this to you and uh, how we would approach things if you do want to work with us exactly so yeah and remember when it comes to the coaching process it's not uh, just a you know 80 20 nutrition training it's not just a money investment it's that everything investment 100 percent of everything matters and so do not take this decision to invest in coaching lightly we certainly are vetting you just as much as you're vetting us so if this is something that you're ready to get into and you're really really ready to be coach in a very structured and serious manner then we would love to hear from you other than that guys we'll wrap up there thank you very much for your time and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode of better body radio before we sign off just remember the best way you can support us as a podcast is to go on to your preferred podcast station leave us a five-star review uh, of course if you're not already following us on social media please go and check us out other than that until next time have a great rest of week